Today in my book, In Ineffable Attributes, we will be going through God's wisdom. And wisdom means the quality of having experience and knowledge. It is the application of knowledge. So Jeremiah 10, 12 says, It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. God, by his wisdom, formed all that is. God did not look at other blueprints from another person. There's no other entity higher, more vast, uh, or anything than God. God alone is, as Anselm says, is the highest conceivable being. He is God alone. There's no other such thing as God. There's only one God who is three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know from Proverbs that no counsel, no understanding, no wisdom can avail against the plans of the Lord. Why? Because God has always been. Before he even created, he, he by his middle knowledge, he knew every single event that could happen. If he placed me or you within a different time uh, or a different generation or a different location, he knows the type of different world that would be. Obviously, it would be a different world because we'd have different relationships with different people, different experiences. God, by his middle knowledge, knows all these different things of what would happen had things been such and such a way. And so by God's wisdom, before he even formed uh, everything, before he even created the foundations of the earth, he had all this knowledge locked in. He, he knew it instantly because God is self-existent and self-sustained. He is the omniscient one who is all-knowing, and his knowledge goes far beyond anything we can ever fully comprehend or understand. And so by his wisdom, he knew exactly where to put you and I within space-time. He knew exactly what should be permitted and allowed. He knew exactly the, the end of everything by which things were uh, come, would come about. He knows by his wisdom when he should intervene specifically, when he should perform certain miracles, and when he should refrain from doing so. God has all this wisdom in an instant. By his wisdom, he created the foundations of the earth. The earth was not created on its own. Mountains and seas and valleys and trees, none of these just came by themselves. God knew exactly what he wanted to create. And it's such an amazing thing by his wisdom. You know, we, we, we grow in wisdom by the books we read, from the people we learn, from staying in the word, from growing in God. We grow in wisdom. In God, there is no learning. And in God, there is no growth for him. God does not learn about something. He, he does not grow to come to understand something. He knows everything within an instant because God is far beyond anything that we can even conjure up. He is beyond concept itself. He, as, uh, as we learned earlier from Gregory of Nyssa, I believe, uh, you know, we can only wonder at the fullness of God. And all that God knows is just incredible. There are creations we have not even seen that, that are yet to come in the new heaven and new earth by which we're going to be absolutely astounded and wowed by that we've never been able to even imagine. There are things that God is going to create by his wisdom that's just going to just absolutely blow our minds away. And so God's wisdom, we need to know and learn that in God is all wisdom. He is wisdom himself. Christ is wisdom. He is the word. He is the wisdom. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And why we don't go to God for wisdom is, is beyond understanding. When will we learn? When will I learn to go to God in everything? Because God is wisdom, and he will give wisdom so freely and graciously to those who ask. As, as we know from James, God shows no partiality to anyone. And he is so faithful and willing to give the good request that we ask with a pure spirit. Now, he's not going to give wisdom to someone who, is, um, who wants to appear uh, super intelligent before a crowd and just boost their ego. He's not going to do that. But for those who want wisdom in their life with, hey, God, what am I supposed to do here? 
What am I supposed to say? God will reveal. He will give wisdom to those who have a genuine and pure, pure heart uh, of those who request and ask him for it. And I love this passage. <clears throat> it's a longer one, but it, it shows the wisdom of God in just a wonderful way. And, and there's so much, much, so much scripture in each and every one of these chapters that we don't go over. There's so much expounded upon that we only briefly touch on with each video here. But this one is from Job 28, 12 through 28. But where shall wisdom be found? And where's the place of understanding? Man does not know its worth, and it is not found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not in me. And the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be bought for gold, and silver cannot be weighed as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir and precious onyx or sapphire. Gold and glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and death say, We have heard a rumor of it with our ears. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight and apportioned the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we fear the Lord, when we revere him and we respect him, we come to understand that God truly is far beyond anything we can conjure up in our puny little minds. And although he, he grows us in revelations of him, the fullness of God is forever out of reach. Yet we can truly know him by believing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repenting of our sins. So, we will go ahead and end uh, this chapter with one of the five quotes at the end of each chapter. And this one is from Origen. He says, But the wisdom of God, which is his only begotten Son, being in all respects incapable of change or alteration, and every good quality in him being essential, and such as cannot be changed and converted, his glory is therefore declared to be pure and sincere. Christ alone is wisdom himself. And if we will merely learn that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, if we will humble ourselves and come to understand, as Corinthians says, that the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of man. Not that there's any foolishness of God, but just whatever man can conjure up, whatever neuroscientists and philosophers and and doctors and and businessmen and 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 mathematicians the smartest people of the day take all their wisdom lump them all in you can have uh, the the million smartest people to ever live and that does not equal up to nor can it even grasp the wisdom of god because the foolishness of god is greater than the all the intellects of men it doesn't matter if they're from ancient the ancient greeks in the past or nowadays with those who are just very intelligent when it comes to uh, the crypto space and blockchains and, and understanding the brain and neuroscience and all of that, uh, or even computer scientists, all of that is but a drop in the bucket compared to the wisdom of God. So may we just come to understand that by God's wisdom, he formed the earth. By God's wisdom, he, he created us. Uh, the human body is so complex. It's far more complex than any computer system. And it only could have come from a creator. There is no way that it happened on its own. So may we learn to go to God, who is wisdom and who is willing to give wisdom so freely, if we will simply believe in Christ, 
repent of our sins, deny ourselves, deny our own intellect and human reasoning, and just say, God, give me the wisdom to live and be who you are declaring me to be, and give me the wisdom to speak that which is edifying to the body of Christ and which will help guide others to the truth of you who is the God of wisdom.